Imagine a place where most of North America's tundra swans and thousands of snow geese gather every winter. Imagine the only place in the world where red wolves run wild. Imagine a place where families have farmed the land for many generations. Is this the place for a 30,000 acre practice field for fighter jets? The U.S. Navy thought so. The Southern Environmental Law Center did not. Thus began one of the highest profile cases in SELC's history. A five-year battle that took us from the courtroom to the halls of Congress. In 2003, the Navy revealed its plan to build a practice runway for Super Hornet fighter jets on North Carolina's Albemarle Pamlico Peninsula, a place described by one admiral as the middle of nowhere. But as SELC knew from decades of work here, this peninsula is someplace special. It's home to five wildlife refuges, including Pocosin Lakes National Wildlife Refuge, a globally important wintering ground for migratory waterfowl. Every winter, more than 100,000 tundra swans and snow geese roost and feed here before returning to the Arctic. The Navy's proposed site for the outlying landing field is only three and a half miles away. The Navy's plan called for 32,000 jet takeoffs and landings per year. That's one every 15 minutes. The risk of collisions was so severe that the former head of the Air Force bird strike team spoke out against the proposal. But the Navy said it could control that threat by poisoning the birds if necessary. But birds weren't the only wildlife in danger. The peninsula is home to hundreds of black bears and a fragile population of endangered red wolves. Red wolves were declared extinct in the wild until they were successfully reintroduced here in 1986. Bordering the refuges are thousands of acres of croplands owned by families who have farmed here for generations. Many in this tight-knit community were outraged to hear that the Navy's plan would displace nearly 100 family farmers. Undeterred, the Navy began buying up land in 2003. SELC moved in quickly to challenge the project. We won three successive legal victories. We proved conclusively that the Navy went through the motions of a meaningless environmental review to reverse engineer a decision about where to site the OLF. The federal court issued an injunction halting the project. Still, the Navy refused to back down. When the Navy couldn't win in court, they took the battle to the political arena. But SELC was one step ahead and met with members of Congress to help them recognize the damage the OLF would inflict. In January 2008, Congress denied authorization and funding for the project. Finally, the Navy abandoned its plan for the OLF. It took flexibility and staying power to stand up to the Navy. It meant using the full power of the law. It meant working with decision makers at all levels of government, from Washington County, North Carolina, to Washington, D.C. I'm Derb Carter, director of SCLC's North Carolina office and lead attorney on the OLF case. I'm honored to have been able to play a role in protecting this one-of-a-kind landscape.